At this stage in your Excel journey, you should be reasonably familiar with pivot tables. And in fact, we covered pivot tables extensively in the intermediate version of this course. Now, every demonstration that we've done of pivot tables has basically been using one data source to create a pivot table. So just to move this idea on a little bit and take it more into the advanced realm, we're going to start to explore how we can build a single pivot table, but based on multiple different data sources. So let me show you what I mean. Now on the screen here, I have a file called orders.xlsx, and this is a list of orders for a coffee shop. You can see we have different products. They're selling cappuccino. And if we scroll down further, there's flat white and latte and espresso and all of that good stuff. We can see a customer ID column, an order ID, the product, the unit sold and the date. Now, currently, if I wanted to analyze this data set on its own using a pivot table, I could definitely do that. But the customer ID here isn't particularly meaningful. So I just have a number for each of the customers. I don't have anything like their name or any other details. Now that's because I have all of the customer information contained in a separate workbook. And that workbook is here. It's called customerlist.xlsx. So now we have the different customer IDs. So there's just five of them in this example and the name of the companies that buy coffee from us. We then have further details about our customers. So we have their phone number, the address, the city, the state, the zip, and also the country. And I also have a third workbook. And this workbook is called Coffee Types. So here you can see all of the coffee types listed. But again, we have a little bit more information that we don't have in any of the other tables. We have the revenue per coffee and the cost per coffee as well. So maybe I want to build a pivot table that utilizes all of the data across these three different tables. Now we can do this using something called power pivot. And you can see that if you take a look up at my ribbons, I already have my power pivot ribbon loaded up. Now, this isn't something that you'll see by default when you open up Excel. This is an add in that you need to turn on and it's an add in that is included in Excel. You don't need to download it from a website. So let me just very quickly show you where you go to turn that on. We're going to go to file and we're going to go down to options and we need to go into the add ins page. Now, if you go down to the bottom where it says manage, we're going to click the drop down and we're going to go to com add ins and click on go. Now, what you'll find when you bring up this window is that one of them is Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. So if you can't see that ribbon, it's going to mean that you just need to tick this box, click on OK and you should see this ribbon appear. And this is the ribbon that we're going to use to basically combine our data sources and link our different tables, because that is the important point about Power Pivot. And when you're working with multiple sources, the tables need to have a corresponding field to link to. Now, the first thing we need to do is basically get all of the tables into Power Pivot. So I'm going to click in this first table, the orders table. I'm going to go up to the Power Pivot ribbon and we're going to click Add to Data Model. This button just here in the tables group. It's going to open up the Power Pivot window and there is our data set. Notice at the bottom we have a tab called Orders. Now we also need to add the other two tables from the other two worksheets into the Power Pivot data model. So I'm going to go up to the Get External Data group. We're going to say From Other Sources and we're going to scroll down until we find Excel file. There it is. Let's click on Next. So now we can browse for the other two files. So I'm going to click on Browse. And there is one of them. So that's coffee type. So let's select it and you need to do these one at a time. And let's click on open. And it's really important to check this box. Use first row as column headers. So it's really best to make sure that you do have your data or your headers in the first row in each workbook. Now we can click on test connection to make sure that that's going to work. I can see that. Yes, it's succeeded. Let's click on OK and click on next. And this is the table I want to import. So let's click on finish. And you can see it says six rows transferred. Let's click on close. And there we go. We've now imported the coffee types workbook. So I have two workbooks in my data model. Let's do exactly the same thing and import that last one. So from other sources, we're going to scroll down till we find Excel. Click on next. Let's browse 
And the final spreadsheet to import is customerList.xlsx. And another point to note here is that you can't have these open. Everything needs to be closed for you to be able to import them in. So let's click on Open again. I'm going to say Use First Row as column headers. Let's test the connection. Everything's looking good. Click on Next. This is my table. Let's click on Finish. And there we go, five rows transferred. Let's click on Close. And there we go. We now have all three of our tables imported into Power Pivot. Now, currently, if you take a look at the Power Pivot ribbon, we clicked on the Home ribbon. We have two other ribbons, Design and Advanced. We're not going to be exploring all of these because that is pretty much outside the scope of an Excel Advanced course. But we are going to be taking a look at some of these options on the Home ribbon. Now, if you cast your eyes across to the view group at the end, you can see that currently we're working in data view. And data view just means that we can see all of our data tables that make up this new data model. Now, we do have another view called diagram view, which we're going to switch into in the next lesson. Because as I said, we need to make sure that we're linking all of the tables together by common fields. If we don't do that, each table is going to be completely independent of the other. So if you want to build a pivot table utilizing any of the information in any of these tables, it's not going to work unless they're linked. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.